Okay, I think I've done. Probably need a special page in front of the to stream. Like transitioning in and out. Uh, today you'll notice that I'm having a smaller window frame here because I'm on a old potato display that doesn't even have full HD output but on the upside uh, as you can see there's room to the left and right uh, out to the right and bottom uh, for other information so there's less overlay and more uh, detailing going on here mm. anyway welcome to today's uh, one hour and a half maybe um, of working with SwiftUI. I noticed after last week's um, experimental stream that I'm and I don't really know what to do with the uh, SwiftUI approach. There's so much that's getting in the way of things. I'm like I'm, I'm not sure how to how to progress uh, app making, which is weird because I've made both uh, Mac and iOS applications from scratch, but the SwiftUI I part is but the Swift UI part is utterly confusing at times. Will it exclude? Well I just opened the project and then greeted with this. Um, but a book I think that can be useful is uh, where is the camera? There it is. Okay, focus, focus there. Test driven development in Swift by uh, Mocha Gio uh, at M O K A G I O uh, on Twitter, GitHub, and uh, Gio. Um, yeah, that's his uh, internet name, of course. Um, Gio, which is his first name. Um, Gio wrote this book. Um, Applying test driven development. Uh, that's the uh, dishwasher beeping in the background. I'm not sure if you can hear it. Um, it's beeping because it wants to be emptied. Uh, and this book has uh, what's it? 13, 16 chapters. 16 chapters. And the first chapters are about test driven development in general. Um, why it's useful, what it's useful for, and Geo uh, takes a very, um, very chill test-driven development stance. Because I'm I, I'm saying chill because a lot of test-driven development proponents on the internet um, are what's it called zealots. Um, in as much as they, oh no more build warnings, compile errors. Okay, I'm gonna resolve that in a minute. Um, Geo's book is. Uh, a chill because um, he's not well. He's not he's not being um, a dogmatist. He's uh, being a pragmatist in most of the things that I've read so far. And I'm uh, three quarters through the book. Uh, why didn't I finish the book yet? Um, because I found that uh, I wanted to experiment with some of the things that he's doing here. And what he is doing is he's applying test-driven development, which means you write the tests first, make them fail, and then implement the uh, the code that should be tested, and then make it pass the test. It's test-driven because the tests come first. And why is it useful? It's useful because you have to think about um, accessing accessing the things from the outside, um, which means. You have to, to, to design an API before you implement the actual functionality. Uh, that's a cool twist for a lot of cases because, um, well, everyone can... Let's look at, at this SwiftUI code for a bit. Uh, I've familiarized myself with the new interface here. I want to show the editor only. Yes. Look at a simpler view, maybe this. Okay, so this is a Swift UI view. In this Swift UI view is a URL status view. It's using a validator and it's uh, creating this Swift UI view 
body. While the validator is in the process of performing network activity, um, you get a spinning loading circle view and when it is done, you get uh, a validity image, which is either um, an X when it didn't work or a circle with a check mark inside if the um, URL looks valid. This thing is used in the now 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 page, valid the now 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 app to um, to check the URL that you entered if it's uh, reachable. Um, because I didn't find a regular expression based um, URL validator to be useful because if I enter HTTP colon slash slash uh, this domain doesn't exist dot uh, IO uh, that's a valid URL from a formal perspective but it cannot be fetched if the domain doesn't exist so it doesn't make sense to add a subscription um, based on the formal validity of the string I want to add uh, URLs to subscribe to in the application here to um, only if they are actually reachable um, at the moment of subscription. If the page goes down, if the web server crashes or whatever, well, bad luck um, uh, later on. Or if the, if the person um, hosting the page is changing on the domain, or if, if the web page goes away um, in the long run, well, of course, the updates cannot be fetched anymore. Um, and there's currently no uh, functionality to notify the user about problems with the subscriptions. Um, but at the point of subscribing, the page should exist to make subscription possible. You know what? Um, uh, the command tab thingy is in the wrong, on the wrong screen. Yeah, because uh, I was using it there. So here's my um, my project buffer in Emacs, and I'm here's. Well, this, this started as an objective for the app and then it turned into a huge to-do list uh, with check marks and then expanded even more and more and it's getting very, very uh, hard to maintain. So I'm actually adding to-dos below now and cleaning this up in the process. You know, this is, this is organic, homegrown project management. Um, so what do we have here? Uh, what do I wanted to say? I wanted to... Oh. Um, if... Ask user if, sub, if subs, um, subscription should be removed if page cannot be if, if URL cannot be fetched. Uh, let me turn off fancy debrief mode so you don't get the the, the expansion. Um, I mean, Emacs is trying best to uh, offer expansions but it just expands everything uh, that it knows that's currently open and I think um, and if I if I type fet I don't want to type fetched and then it's finding some URL that's like this long and covers multiple lines that's not very useful so instead we're going to I'm going to disable um, the abbreviation expansion how to, to do this. Um, I mentioned this before, but I'm not uh, usually working with uh, remote uh, with, with network requests, so I don't have uh, a lot of techniques prepared. So if this is stupid, excuse me. So double check if internet per se is the problem. Host. to check um, if I'm actually connected to uh, to the internet.
of water. I have to fetch you in a second. Mm, because staying hydrated is very important for hard thinking. So, okay. Uh, where's, where did we start off? I wanted to... Um, this is just... Oh, that's, I just took note of something that came to mind while I read the code. Okay, so this is um, validating URLs. Uh, and the view is pretty simple. It has uh, this one state, and depending on... I mean, it has two, two states, really. Um, either the request is pending, the request has failed, or the request has worked and it's valid. So this is the effect of a network request. Um, depending on the effect of... Uh, depending on the network request state, we uh, display something in the application. I would love to show it, but I have uh, seven build errors at the moment, which I have to resolve in a second. Um, Okay, so what do you do with this? How, how do you test this? Um, this is this has no external, this has no surfacing API. The only API that you get is maybe. Oh, that's not the button. Uh, out option click. No. I'm pretty sure I clicked on something here to. Aha. Okay, this maybe. Yes. Resume preview. Maybe if this one thing compiles, preview works, I'm not sure. Eh. Build error icon on the top right doesn't look good. Uh, probably not getting preview here. So. Okay. so there's no API. This is the only thing that is injected from the outside. An injection is a technical term, which basically means uh, the object isn't created here, it comes from the outside. An observed object, and this is this has to come from somewhere. So the question is, who is uh, creating this? It's being created. This is um, because it is a struct. Um, internally, you get the the, the uh, automatically generated initializer. So there's implicitly here, I imagine, to be an initializer that has one parameter. And the parameter is of this form. That's the uh, the, the default behavior. And here the initializer is called, and here the dependency is injected, and the observed object is pushed down in the view hierarchy. Um, so the view doesn't, the URL status view gets it from elsewhere, and it doesn't even matter where it comes from at this point in the now page URL view thing. But here, here it's it's here it is used, and the only thing that matters is that there's uh, valid data at all. It's an observable object. Absor being observable means it has uh, the object itself knows if its contents have changed and is it's surfacing these publishable and published um, properties. And I think, if I remember this correctly, that the um, the, the virtue of being an observable object means um, that this here, the, the the check on this one property, which is itself a published property, um, that means that this is. Um, This makes it magically auto-update the view, so I don't have to um, to, to write a did set a property observer here and then perform um, imperative changes to the um, to to a view. No, the view is subscribing to changes to the to this property internally, and if this changed in any way, then the view is uh, updated. Automatically, that's the Swift UI promise that if you use the proper combination of things, then most view updates um, happen, yeah, auto magically. I really don't like the word because there's no magic. It's just hiding a lot of the details that you have to write, a lot of the boilerplate, and gives a lot of functionality for free. And this is not actually a view in the sense that an app kit NS view or UI kit uh, UI view is a view, this is just a data representation of the view. So you really just describe the view. So the change to the data here is making a data change in this implicit return value, the, the view builder, and uh, the, the whole view builder hierarchy data updates. Okay, so that's the how the data updates. And from this, um, SwiftUI creates something on screen. That's all we have to care about to make this work. And this does work, I promise. I'm going to show this once I'm resolving the... It's one more build error. Okay, I'm going to resolve this and then we have a look at the checkmark stuff. But um, 
what is still bothersome is that um, apart from injecting an object here and then so this enables us let me go to the place where this is called and command option control click uh, yeah open on the right side oh no the canvas okay i don't want a canvas just the code please okay so here this is called and here th this is injected and in a test we could use this as well we could um, inject a test validator that just produces is valid and then we test okay what's what's the view content then it produces and then in another test case it only produces invalid um, or error cases and then we can assert if we were able to write tests then we could assert that the correct view is displayed but here's nothing that makes the url status view observable we can inject a url validator replacement that doesn't actually do network requests but it, um, it it pretends it does so this would be in one test case always is performing network activity would be returning true and then we want to assert that a spinning loading circle is displayed but how do we do this we cannot write an assertion for this and uh, Geo is doing a very good job in this book to make um, the app testable because this, the URL status view, which is a very, very tiny view component in the overall app architecture, um, this is already, this was written to um, to look uh, to look good, but it's uh, yeah, it, it was not written to be testable in code, and it shows. So let me fetch some water, and then I'll be back in a second. So I, I want to try two things today. Um, a problem with applications as they are code bases, even libraries that are right. Um, at some point there's this, this moment where I realize, okay, I cannot modify this simple experimental project anymore without possibly breaking a lot of use cases. And that's where tests really shine because they uh, make regression of existing behavior less likely. Why is that good? That's good because uh, in in that case, your um, well, I'm explaining this really, really, really backward. Um, okay, if you write tests, you can verify that the behavior that the application or library or objects or whatever um, currently exposes doesn't change if you modify the code. So you can safely add new functionality and have backup verifications that automatically run to make sure that you didn't break anything that you want to keep. Um, there's not much room to make the URL status view break, but not even this one is testable and the rest of the application isn't either and it it makes it harder to um, to 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 imagine adding functionality because there's so many moving parts involved that I'm not sure how to implement I'm not confident in Swift UI view composition um, I, I, I have to look up everything because this is so new to me um, I'm not confident in, in making the UI better just like that because I'm not experienced enough but I'm also not confident in um, creating the, um, the, the the combine and um, this reactive code base to make make my my domain model um, expose the functionality that I wanted to expose um, which makes um, which makes it even harder to make the app better so that's not that's not useful. That's not a useful state to be in. And to get out of this state, it would be great if I could write if I could test um, the, the, the the internal model behavior, like what is what what is a valid um, subscription, um, and how does the um, the user interface behave in general. And then I can compose in the test realm um, behavioral changes, 
and these in turn will make it possible to uh, expand the code on that level because then I can write tests that, that like I really loved how, how Geo called this wishful coding. Um, it basically says um, that in tests you write the code you would want to have, uh, but it doesn't exist yet. So you, you do wishful coding in the tests and then you write the implementation to make it actually work and make it a reality. And by, by doing that, you, you, you bring into reality the thing that you wish you had. Uh, that's pretty pretty cool. It's also super powerful. That is basically what you do when you are programming anyway. Um, but the the test driven approach, or well, the, the approach to writing tests at all, is making it possible to to wish for the best possible API and then figure out how to implement it without compromising um, on the expressiveness. Another buzzword. What's the, what what do I mean when I say expressiveness? I mean that um, this here is. Uh, I came up with this um, property is performing network activity. It's where is it even? Where is it even defined? Uh, yes. Okay. Oh, I see. There's reachable URL. Oh, I remember. Yeah, code adapted from Stack Overflow, like the pros do. Uh, so you get a a reachability test basically which publishes to an activity publisher is it active yes or no um, it says true false false and so you have this pending and non-pending um, uh, toggle I'm not sure if this is the best approach but again not very experienced with either combine um, network request um, writing and stuff like that so this this is performing network activity property is pretty expressive to me and um, that's that's what I wanted to have I wanted to have a test not for URL validator um, something something dot um, is active dot uh, request state equals pending or something I want to have a higher level API to just ask the validator hey, are, are you still doing this thing or are you finished um, doing this automatically but I know a lot of people who don't um, who who really go reach reach deeply inside where they know the um, the truth is but then they really couple this higher level view to a very 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 low level foundation API and I don't want to do this um, that's that's an effect of practicing testing and test driven development for a while I think maybe it's just experience because I uh, stubbed my nose um, quite a lot on that I wrote in a less readable manner. Either way, um, wishful coding. You can do it um, without tests. You can just write, well, I want to have a property, a validator dot is performing network activity, then the compiler will complain, then you just implement the property and off you go. But you can also, this requires the consuming view to be present so we can write the code. In tests, you don't have to um, have the whole app working just to write the wish down in code. You can just wish for it in isolation so to speak okay anyway um i don't know how to write tests for swift ui uh, views well i know now thanks to thanks to uh, geo's book um but i didn't know how to how to do this before and one thing that i like about books compared to um, tutorials blog posts and stack overflow answers is that a book is a cohesive piece you have what's this like almost 300 pages that are written by one person and which tackle similar problems, which tackles similar problems from different angles. So this is how Geo imagines um, uh, a well-written code base to look like, what, what it would look like. Here are view model tests. What is a view model? Geo has, a, has one interpretation of view model that he's being consistent with in the whole book. And that's different from when you look up view model on the internet and then have uh, let's say a dozen articles that um, approach the topic from a different angle each. That's make, that makes it really hard to uh, come up with something cohesive in your own app. But if you have someone who's writing a book on this topic and um, sticks to the principles and then sticks to the same approach, then you can learn how to, how to deviate from this one example and, and how to... You, you can interpolate from the... No you can extrapolate from 
um, the examples because there are so many of them in the book. If you have one example, you could have a hard time applying it to your um, domain and to your problem space. But if you have like 40 examples scattered throughout the book, then you see the patterns. Then you see, oh, do you adapted the pattern this way to implement this feature, that's a clever idea, or that's at least somewhat consistent with what he done, did in, a, in another place, and so on and so on. So you have to um, think less, which may be a bad thing, but you also um, gain the freedom to, uh, well, you have to think less because you don't have to solve the problem from scratch, but you have a more consistent solution in the end. So rambling. Let us fix the compiler problems. Why uh, is this broken at all? I did not touch anything in the past week mm. and things have broken. It's always nice. Build input file cannot be found. Uh, plugins, tests. Is the scheme broken? I didn't, I didn't even compile tests, I think. The tests are only compiling if I... Hmm. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Okay, let's ignore the tests. I didn't want to compile them. I don't know why they popped up here. this be because Xcode 13 doesn't come with the new API. SDK from macOS 12 or something. Uh, that would be S. Oh no, I deleted the beta. that the iOS 15 SDK is part of the current Xcode release. If I had fast internet, I could of course download the beta again, but I don't, so I can't. did work uh, okay so it might, this may be the infamous um, problem with uh, uh, Xcode 13 the current uh, stable release uh, not shipping with the Mac OS 12 SDK for whatever reason I haven't looked into this but I have noticed that everyone um, is complaining about that so we have to stick to the iOS version, uh, which I don't really like because running the simulator is creating more overhead. Well, what can you do? Let's see. Using the iPhone 13 simulator. This has to initialize first. So a lot of time wasted waiting. That's the Xcode experience for everyone. this uh, uh, book in an ebook version to show it on screen but then again if I would show it on screen would this be uh, a 
case of copyright infringement. I guess so. What is showing the page on the camera? I think what if I just copy the code there? Testing static Swift UI views. Yes. So the thing that you cannot see is uh, well here's a view um, that is referencing uh, model data. Okay, while well, this is still loading, let's go back to the So this this view, there's model data and this model data comes from this URL validator. It's pretty pretty similar. status view and then pass a fixture, a test double or whatever you want to call it, what's appropriate for the case, but how do you then inspect the actual view? Okay, you assert the view model and then mm, don't inspect the body itself. I don't remember why. Ah, the app is running. Nice, okay. So on this absurdly large iPhone simulator window, you see that the uh, requests come in. Let's, let's have a look at the URL status view. So this is, uh, okay. I mean, it makes sense that it starts with, this is not valid, but it could as well be uh, not visible because nothing was typed into this text field. Ah, first time, run experience, the keyboard initializes. Okay, so this is the, um, X mark octagon state. X mark and it's a octagon. Yes, because it's not valid. Let's type in mm, duck. Spinning loading indicator duck duck. No, it's still not valid. Go yes. No duck. And oh, okay. Apparently that website exists as well. Duck duck go dot co. Uh, I haven't checked to make sure uh, please don't visit this page and check it for yourself might be um, might be that DuckDuckGo um, deserve this as a forward might also be that it's a scam site you know, like the typos of Amazon like ASM and stuff like that where we just have to um, uh, landing pages with lots of ads I imagine they generated traffic and thus income before Amazon bought them for eBay e EBA and the Y comes before the A at least in Germany there was a landing page for a while and then I think eBay um, uh, bought them okay test driven development in the world winding up the UI an ebook would be a lot less boring for you to watch. Same stuff. How do I test? Pure functions. Yes. In the next chapter, we'll look at the technique to keep our test clean and focused. I don't know. Keep the Swift UI layer behavior free. Keep logic away from the Swift UI view so that you can work and iterate on it with the faster test driven feedback loop. Hmm. Don't let your tests crash. Yeah, okay, I don't have tests. That's no problem. Command U to run the tests, which are non existent. Uh oh, compiler errors. Oh no. What does this even mean? 
Is it because the target is empty? Is the target empty? Test iOS, it's empty. Oh, okay, maybe it doesn't just doesn't compile anything at all. It doesn't create a build product. Uh, there's no share tests. Did I create the shared folder? Was it part of the frame, um, the template? I don't remember either. stuff should be platform independent at least the shared stuff should have a shared test uh, so test class please wait a second Mac OS no iOS mm -hmm. will this be a problem how do I cross compile this the problem is that I can't compile the macOS code so I can't even test the cross compilation of the targets for Mac and iOS might as well just stick to iOS then, right? Um, so what we need is a URL. What was it called? Let validator. Uh, now page URL validator test. How do I test this though? It's a lot. There's a lot of things in the background. Valid URL. So you pass in text with the input. Your L strings. Yes, this is the input. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then it tries to do the reachable URL test. This is actually doing the network request. Ah, uh, problem with this is that it's, if I had written this test driven, I would have written um, this piece uh, without any uh, outgoing network requests, but uh, things are mushed together here quite, quite hard. Um, I would have to extract this um, URL request stuff first. Let me, let me have a look. Oh. Geo is approaching this. So there's two tasks at the moment. It's testing static Swift UI views boils down to key takeaways. The view doesn't have to be responsible. So use a view model for all the logic and then don't make assertions on the view itself. That's what it just boils down to for the URL status thing. We should make assertions on the view model. And this is essentially the object that is on um, the view model, the page validator. This is the source of truth. It's actually a very complicated source of truth. Um, I would have preferred if the things there wouldn't... I, I would have preferred if the stuff here um, wouldn't use uh, combine. It would just be regular properties because then you can just well, use replacement then just use it there and then figure out how to create the property effects, uh, create the objects as an effect of the actual requests. But as it stands now, that something works. Testing dynamics with your eye views. This is, I mean, why is it, why, why dynamic? Dynamic um, in the case of the URL validation, because it has logic that changes things couple of view model from the implementation details yes abstraction layer um, allows placeholder implementation so you still don't make assertions on the view you make assertions on the view model using static fixture data but you're using dynamic placeholders how to test async updates how to, does it test it ah, with 
the sink. Okay, so actually it does perform the async stuff there. Does he also does Geo also do this for web requests? I don't imagine. In that case you would Yeah, you would be extracting the this network piece of the puzzle. It's a free function, it doesn't have any uh, anything to do with this object at all. So it's just transforming a string to two outputs. The publisher is being used, that's a side effect. Where's my finger? I can't count if the, if the finger is not visible. Okay, take this in. It's a side effect, the publisher, and then um, the Turn value is also publisher, so th this is this is producing side effects like you know, the, which are which are just um, which can also be skipped or ignored. Um, but then you also get the result once it's finished. So this is a promise, um, which means it's an it's a deferred result. You get the URL eventually, not right now. You have to wait for the event to be produced. Yes. Okay. So we have two outputs return value and the side effect output and we have essentially one input the string it's more like a dependency this network activity publisher mm. i don't want to test this function i don't want to test that uh, network requests do perform network requests i do want to test uh, the now url page for the data though i want to test that it is um this is performing network activity boolean um, in to subscribe to these effects like is publishing yes so so I want to, to verify that if if this um, this helper here is publishing changes then the uh, property updates as well um, I cannot test it at the moment because this is hard-coded and there's no way to override this So really ugly. The first step of refactoring. Okay. First, create a test class. New file. This time for real. Copy pasting. For the win. No bridging header, please. Does compilation work now? This is not doing anything, but it should make uh, the compiler not complain because build products do exist. Yes, okay, this is progress. test driven development cycle really shines when the feedback loop is short but if the simulator has to run and while I'm streaming everything is so potato is slow uh, tough luck tough luck nothing to do I, I don't want to extract a library shared code target now just for the sake of making tests faster I can leave that as a task for my future self so tests do work Create a null page URL validate uh, validator object and it takes parameters because the initializer here is a uh, remit. 
data less with a certain MVP of zero, and it does everything itself. It creates all the objects, it calls all the logic, it's totally self-contained, but this is not a virtue. It's problematic. I want to validate it, and I want to make, make it so that So not familiar with combine. It's similar to Rx Swift, but I've never written tests with combine. So learning experience. So this is creating the object, and I can't do anything with it except look at the properties. I can pass in this this the input, which is not apparent. And this is the input, and um, these are the outputs. Network activity is going to change on the side. Valid URL is the effect of looking at the input text, um, but the API is really not so good. So, text. One, two. What can I do with the publisher? Assign to catch, collect, combine. I can combine them. Let me scroll. Yes, bounce, delay, drop, flat map, max, merge, min. I was looking for something like accept value, so I want to pass in one value to the to the publisher. But maybe because it's a published property, using the property wrapper, I can just do it like this. URL doesn't change because it's new because in the beginning because there's no valid URL but then this invalid URL is going to be invalid so this stays nil so all that's changing is network activity is starting and then something happens and then uh, the effect is produced so what's the something happen I have I don't have a request a thingy Yeah, this, this. 
this is the quest. I'm so accustomed to object-oriented uh, programming that I'm thinking in terms of objects. And here I try to make this a function because a function is the, a free function because it's uh, the, the least expensive thing in Swift that you can do to make this request work. this you don't have to make this an object you can also make this make, make a testable function let me let me try, try this so this this has to be injectable and the function signature is string network activity Activity Publisher, which is a pass through subject of the type returns and we will end errors out never. And it returns a portion. Compiling the iOS app should work. Yes. It's just the tests, but why? Target application, yeah. Build settings, build faces, link library. I'm just guessing. Because then it should complain when compiling the app here. Maybe it's because an extension to an internal type, ever uh, to, to a foundation type. Mm -hmm. um, 
this shows that I forgot to use the uh, parameter. like a legacy application refactoring there's an app already but it's already aha uh -huh. don't tell me that this was masking the actual error no it couldn't because there wasn't was a default implementation and it wasn't able to look this up for whatever reason okay so now we can inject our test double it's a function it takes a string it takes a side effect producing side effect publisher and it produces a promise. Nil. Cannot con 
convert from just to any publisher, I think. Yeah, just output to blah blah blah. Erase to any publisher. is this undefined symbol oh. is it the combine types pass through subject what does the linker not find so this is not a beta anymore why does this not Swift string, yes, this should just work. Uh, I, 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 of course, I cannot create this uh, from scratch if I had to, but nothing in here looks suspicious. There's a lot of frameworks being. Try a concrete non any just just string. It's about just string. Is it what about unjust string would be the next question, but we are not interested in unjust strings. Okay, five and six. We have two, three, four, five, and six. All of these should compile. No, why? Oh it's zero. Okay. compile what about the tests <sighs> yeah this is programming no clue why the tools don't work sucks to be you 
the same code module.reachable you will do e four five six this free function is this because this is an application target do application targets not expose free functions to tests for some reason because you usually cannot import applications you can just import framework modules um, yeah, that would suck that would suck inexperience times 1000 you know what does not suck objects does this work Multiple build failures. Then you I test. Wait. With two. Nineteen. Okay. I have the same issue. Got around by copying settings for linking bundle loader and testing from the making a test time. Testable import. Aha. No. I don't think this is how other people write their stuff. Okay. Where's the code for this book? Oh, 
source.url apress.com slash source code If only I could be using macOS as a test target where I know how things work. Source code, where can I find it? Yes, go to the book's product page. Okay. Test driven develop development Swift. Okay, that was that was close. The Dio lobby. Yes. Give me give me code. I don't want the cover. In obvious link, maybe I should have read the rest here. Yeah. If the book has source code, will be button mark, blah blah blah. Click on this code. I'm pretty sure. Are you eye tests? No. Yes, I'm not sure. It has the same icon. It doesn't say. Do you not pay attention? How can I figure out what kind of test target this is? Blah blah blah. Are these UI tests? Because it's a Swift UI. This is uh, supposedly the icon for unit tests now, and this is the icon for the eye tests. Oh my god, what is this supposed to be? Oh well. Uh, the eye tests are empty, yes. Menu item fixture, a few model tests. Like this is the code from the book that I was looking at. But the sync is containing the assertions. Received news by closure. This is like part of the, this kind of the injection that we are doing. The closure injection, which is spying on the parameter.
stuff. Just tests and UI tests, but the other. Hmm. Okay. to be part of that. I want this to go away. Thank you. Thank you. And if you hear um, the vib vibrations, that's because I have an incoming call. Now, tell me to copy um, this empty UI test want to see if this is a kind of test this is it's just a unit test not a UI test so in the UI testing toilet um, empty test yes give empty test inside now bridging header please Compilation should work while testing is still being skipped. So it's running something here. Testing, testing. What did it test? Whoa. Layout constraints. Not even sure why these are needed. But let's work it. Okay, compiler is happy now. Amazing.
something, at least. Let's perform network activity that starts with false. And once we change this, we want to This is really, really something to make um, this application work and do something uh, useful. I think it's going to take me until 2025, but maybe there will be breakthroughs once I get the hang of this. But today is not the day of breakthroughs, except figuring out what UI and unit tests are. Anyway, GeoSpoke testing, test-driven development in Swift. Test-driven development in Swift is a good book. I can recommend it, it's an easy read, um, and I think it's an easy read, which means uh, it's, uh, what I want to say is, it's not written in an uh, obtrusive way, it's a very easy to follow the instructions, the code, if you're not familiar with testing, the code may be, um, may require you to read the, the, the pages one, two, three times, for example, but um, the key takeaways at the end of each chapter summarize the, well, key takeaways nicely, I like how the chapters are organized and how the book is organized and split into pieces in general. Um, can we comment? We'll be working with it for this application to get the hang of Swift UI testing and um, having a, a good separation of concerns. I hope it's a good separation of concerns, not sure yet. But before we finish off, I want to commit something. I want to commit that I changed the project setup. That's the stuff I did today, right? Uh, the combined framework is still being included here. I can remove that again. It was just a test to figure out if that something to do with. Okay. It said if it had something to do with the uh, linking error that I had. So. Good, come in again. Mm. First, I want to commit the empty. We cannot split this up. Why are you doing this to me? Xcode. is not required, this is required.
Okay. It's a validator test and the scheme, which is now uh, customized to skip the UI tests. Mm, I don't want to commit this. I want to leave most of this uh, out. Prepare unit tests for iOS. And the actual implementation, um, this is in a dirty state, and I'm going to leave this in a dirty state because it is dirty. It's not finished, it doesn't work, it doesn't do anything useful. But maybe next time. Okay. That's it for today. Uh, thank you for watching. Have you have a great rest of your day. Um, and uh, productive programming on your own. See you.